Hey guys, welcome to ATA 203, where we're talking about the top five paint polishing mistakes and how to avoid them. Number five is overworking the quantity of liquid. We're gonna chat about that in a second. Number four is having just way too many products and not really sticking with one. Number three, unclean paint. Number two, unreasonable expectations, meaning you're trying to do a Pebble Beach car and it's your first day detailing, that might be a challenge. And number one is residue control. How do you manage that amount of debris coming off the paint? So from a filmmaker perspective, this was really challenging for me to capture the mistakes uh, on camera and sort of demonstrate what's going on so that we can avoid them in the future. So we, we did the best that we could, Kevin and I, um, we had a lot of questions from the crowd going back and forth. So I'm gonna hop in with me on the board here and then back out uh, into the classroom and we're gonna use lots of demos. So be forewarned, there's lots of conversations and demos, but the concept here, if you understand this one, I think uh, 203 is probably one of the most impactful ones with respect to uh, polishing. So with that being said, let me do a quick little intro to number five, which is overworking the quantity of liquid. The quantity of liquid, uh, we have three variables. We have the, how much liquid you have on the pad, meaning do you have just a little dot or did you put a ton on there, right? So think of it from that perspective. The area that you're working, meaning are you doing a two by two spot or you're doing an entire, you're, you're polishing a lot of space, you know, 10 by 10 or something ridiculous, right? So the area that you're working and number three is the amount of residue that's coming off the paint in that given area, whatever you choose. So if you think of these three variables, in my mind, you know, I'm always examples, is like a fader on a you know, radio thing, right? You know, you push one fader up, the other one's gotta go down. You push this one up, so for instance, residue. If the residue goes up, you gotta push the fader on the area down, meaning you gotta shrink that area. If you increase the quantity of liquid, you can actually increase the area a little bit. Does that make sense? So in my you know, demos, I pulled out uh, two brand new microfiber, Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad to kind of prove a point. I sharpied, I put red three dots that look exactly the same. These represent having compound or polish or whatever you want on there. Again, for obvious reasons, I can't put white compound there because you can't see it and two would drip on my floor. So imagine these or envision these as gas tanks or gas cans or whatever. So I have three gallons of gas on each one of them and they're equal cars. So I have, uh, you know, this, I have lane A and lane B. Now lane A is uh, one foot, lane B is one foot plus another foot, meaning it's double the area. So we'll take you know, the car here. When I start the car up, you have three gallons of gas. Three gallons of gas are gonna get you this far. And you run out of gas right here. You wipe it off, it's good to go. You have the you know, car B or whatever you wanna call it, right? Three gallons of gas, it runs out here, but you keep going. And the car starts puttering and hopping and chattering. So what does that mean to us as detailers? It means when you start wiping this area off, which Kevin is gonna show and prove, it's very sticky and it's not working. You weren't cutting as much. You're having, you know, you're having some uh, swirls and things come in there. Why? Because we didn't manage the amount of residue. We ran out of the quantity of uh, liquid, meaning we overworked that liquid in a given area. So I'll stop there because this concept alone is massive and it took a long time for me to sort of understand that. But if you think about it as those three variables, it's gonna change the way that you polish. So I'm gonna hop quickly into the demo from Kevin and we'll, we'll jump back and forth, but I really hope uh, you guys like 203. It's a game changer. Thanks for watching. So let's hop into number five. We'll start uh, you know, at the top there, overworking the quantity of liquid. Now explain in detail what's really going on here. Okay, a little difficult, but when you use, let's say, a droplet, a, a pea-sized drop that we, we talk about all the time of liquid, it, at some point when you're using that product, right. it's going to cut away paint, but our liquid also contains the, the, the cutaway paint, the sure. contamination, the residue, the oxidation, and it accumulates to the point that it dramatically impacts the performance. So that means it can impact how quickly it can cut and also how well it can finish out meaning it, it can or cannot leave a perfectly polished finish. Right, right. so you know what? That's really the crux of it is the quantity of liquid versus the residue. That's right, it could, it could cause dusting, it can cause stickiness, it can cause chattering, hopping, scouring, scuffing, lack of cut, all kinds of things. Right, so we have uh, a board here or, or a panel. Now, the interesting thing about the, this, this panel is I'm trying to encourage everybody to go to your local body shop Right? We did. Say, hey, we did. We went across Very the street. Very local. <laughs> yes. We went across the street, one of Kevin's friends, and said, hey, is it cool if we rummage through your garbage and find mm -hmm. something that's 
um, you reasonable, know, suitable, yeah. reasonable. Mm -hmm. And of course, a hood is always a good one. You can use door or whatever. Sure. Grab it, throw it in your truck, come home, and now you have a practice panel. That's as great. opposed to just using We're going to you know, do several tests on this one panel. So. All right, so show me, okay, show me so the example here. I've already primed these microfiber pads, and I'm just using the random orbital polisher, cordless. And I'm going to apply Black. three drops, just, just going to lightly smear it. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to start right in the center, okay, right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go that way, so here we go. One foot that way. One foot. And stop. So one pass, one foot. One pass, one foot. Will it get everything out? Likely not. But no. we should be able to see that there's, there's an obvious difference. Okay, so you can already see it wipes very easy there. Yeah, that's true. And it's true. starting to stick here. And there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. Look at that. It was nice and very liquid there. And it becomes drier and drier. But look at this. It's sticking. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Let okay, me switch. So that's, that's one foot pass. Yep. Now you're removing the pad. Remove the pad. Second pad, put a very similar amount of drops. Well, three drops, the same size, as close as I can get the sizing, okay? Boom. You could right, see so my- So now we've just increased, we've doubled the length. Yeah, my pattern wasn't exactly perfect, but for the most part, we mimic that and then we added in that extra foot. Got it. And this should wipe easily here and get progressively harder to remove. Oh, look wow, at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, so, th so this mimicked exactly the same here and the increase in residue, meaning the distance, overwhelmed the amount of liquid. Right, and we didn't get a whole lot of cut there. It just it didn't, it didn't perform to the same degree as the first area. It's, it's obvious where I'm uh, standing right. that I can see Pretty good, pretty similar. It's progressively similar. It's getting worse and worse and less cut. So yeah, that's- leave that on there so we can show that it's not coming off. It's not coming it's, off and yeah. it's sticking and we'll talk about that. All right, so I think that's a pretty good example. Anything else you have on that one in terms of the quantity of liquid? Like I mean, people call you up, hey man, Kevin, I'm running into an issue, blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, our top five one would be quantity of liquid. Quantity of liquid, it impacts so many factors that I hear about. Uh, it's not cutting, it's not wiping or off, maybe they're it's using, scouring. They're doing too big of a surface. Well, that's right. So, so basically you're gonna look at it and say, hey, for the amount of liquid you're using, right. you're either using it for too long or doing too large of an area. So how do you fix that? Well, either do that area for last time. Correct. Or increase the liquid. Liquid, yes. Or decrease the size. Decrease the size. So it's really just a function of all those yep. things. So when they say it doesn't work, you. You, you do some investigation, say, how big is your side? How much liquid are you using? Right. And if everything sounds good, except for the, the size is too big, I'm doing a, a two by three foot and I'm going up and down and left and right and say, how long is that taking you to do? Mm. I do it for about literally three minutes. Okay. I think I know the problem. <laughs> Why don't we try the, the same exact thing, leave everything the same, right. but let's cut that to 30 seconds. Oh, wow. That's much better. It's wiping off easier and I'm getting right. more, it's that easy to decipher what's going on if you just if you think of it that way Got too it. many too many products all right so uh, one of the things i wrote down here is the jack of all trades your master of none i think that's a really good you know phrase it's a popular phrase in this case it's the jack of all products master of none so wh what do you how can you describe well that? you like to go on the racetrack and race cars i do you want to get better and faster on that track do you change the car every time you go no you don't do you change the tires every time? No. Change the fuel every time, all that? No. no you want to try to keep something consistent. And when, you, when we were talking about this off camera, I was saying my hockey stick or let's say brand golf. golf clubs or right. something. It's like, oh, I missed a shot. Well, I'm gonna throw the clubs away. I guess some people do that, but that's not what you're, you know, you, you made a bad shot. Okay, let's refocus. It's not, it's not the actual club yeah. or the hockey stick. Maybe, some, you know, yeah, there's another you, factor there. You tend to make incremental, very small, specific incremental changes so that you can dial in what works best for that vehicle, for right. that track, for that course, whatever. Right. So I think a lot of people give the excuse of, hey, this isn't working. And you look at whatever it is that you have in your hand or whatever's closest to your body at that point, that's, that's causing it not to work. Right. And we're saying, whoa, whoa, hang on a second. Most likely that's not the case. It's not the case. Right. Know. When in reality, if you just stuck 
with whatever product. Again, we put this as generic. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is that floats your boat, I think that's great. Use yeah. whatever it is. Right. But just stick with something that's a reasonable brand that's been around or sure. whatever. Something that's an industry standard. There you go. Available in a multitude of places. A lot of people use it. Overall feedback is great. It's a reputable company. Go with that. Right, right, and, right. And, then, and, and become very, very good at using that specific uh, system. Practice what we preach. Right. We're going to use one pad and one liquid, and we're going to take away these defects. Right. It's pretty bad here, it's too. It's pretty bad. We've got, we've got etchings and scratches and all kinds of good damage. So we're gonna, I'm going to work a small area just to save time, but I'm going to basically work this area here. With the one pad, I'm going to remove the defects. Right. I'm going to continually blow the pad out to get, you know, and keep, keep things clean and then finish out that area with that same one pad and one liquid. Basically, one you're machine. not using lots of product is the point here. To prove the point that you don't need a lot of different options. Got keep, it. Simpler is better. Sure. Okay, I wanted to hop in real quick before Kevin starts polishing and kind of let the cat out of the bag. Off camera, Kevin and I were thinking about, okay, how do we prove too many products? How do you show somebody that, hey, it's probably not the product's problem, it's the technique or the technician's issue. You have to change something and it's not just like throw, throw the baby out with the bath water. So how do I prove that? Uh, Kevin's father actually is in the car, is in the personal care business and he makes all kinds of products. One of which is, uh, you know, uh, cream for your hands, that kind of thing. And Kevin has one of them, obviously. So he said, hey, can you use that cream, the hand lotion and polish the paint? And he's like, yeah, absolutely, of course. So in this video, uh, he's doing that, so I'll fast forward that and kind of speed it up. What's the point? Is he trying to impress you? No, we're trying to impress upon you that if Kevin can polish the paint and restore it with hand lotion, the chances are you can probably do it with something that's actually designed to compound and or polish the paint. So that concept um, I think is very huge with respect to too many products. People say, oh, something's wrong, throw the product out, it's not working. If Kevin can do it with hand lotion, I promise you, you can do it with some, you know, a reputable product uh, for paint. So that's kind of the behind the scenes. I'm going to speed everything up. The little caveat here is with the 10,000 things going on, the only B-roll shot that I have, the only uh, proving shot that it's clean, and believe me, it's clean. Kevin is insane. The paint looked perfect. I was actually wildly <laughs> impressed. Um, the one pad, one polish uh, technique really worked out. And so I have a far shot and you can see some scratches and then no scratches, but I don't have like a microscope shot. So that's my fault. So anyways. You get the point. Don't throw out every single product. Just work with what you have. Got my new pad. I'm gonna prime it. Microfiber, so we prime. Rub that in. <laughs> and, and blow the pad out quickly. Just a quick, quick burst. Thanks. Hold on to that. I'm not gonna add any new liquid right now. I think we're going to stop here and see what we got okay. for time savings. Here. Like, what are we trying to prove? Well, what we're trying to prove is that you don't need a vast array of compounds and polishes and pads, pads. and machines. Just, just use a good system that, that works well and right. you can do a lot with it. The point is, is that if I can do this with a lotion, something was not designed to do this, and still get that kind of a finish with one liquid and one pad and one machine. Imagine when you learn to master a small system. Stick with the, the golf club mm -hmm. that you have, yeah. learn it, practice it, master that particular thing you have. You may find a little tweaks here and there as you go along, but don't throw out the whole entire you know, golf club bag or whatever because right. you missed one shot. Does that make sense? I'm happy. I'm, I'm smiling inside because it's, <laughs> it's so cool. There you go. There you go. All right, so let's move on. We have... Number three, unclean paint. Right. We're talking about something that was applied to the vehicle or the paint to protect it. Mm -hmm. A wax, a polymer, a sealant, a detailing spray, and it's left behind an invisible barrier of, barrier of protection. But it also can affect the rate of cut. It can, it can encompass your abrasive grain, slow down the rate of cut. It, right. can, it can kind of uh, smear into your pads and affect how those perform as because well. Because you're not actually touching the paint. You're writing on top of the surface of whatever it yeah. is, the polymer, the coating, the wax, you're, whatever it is. You go, you go through the rain, if you go too fast, you start to hydroplane. Mm -hmm. This is essentially floating in, inside that. It's being suspended by that invisible layer or being, it's wrapping itself around your strands in your microfiber or against the face of your foam. And so it not only affects the buffing liquid, but 
Primarily the pads. Right, too. so at, when people would call you as the number three, you know, we're doing this in the top five, so the number three one would be unclean paint. What would they say? Like, give me an example. Like, hey, hey Kevin, I can't figure out. This is gonna be shocking, but hey, Kevin, you know, I didn't mean to bug you so late, but I am working on the hardest paint I've ever worked on. It will not cut. Even had a situation where a guy's been doing this for well over 20 years, obviously knew what he's doing. And he's like, I have never encountered this. Right. I have hit it with 3000 grit. I have hit it with wool and a heavy cut compound. I said, send me some photos. And I look at the photos. Again, it's over the phone. And sure enough, I mean, he sent the photos of where he had already sanded and buffed and nothing happened. So I said, I think I know what's going on. So long story short, in a range of 20 to 25 minutes of trying different things, it was a layer of the car wash by the top of the line tunnel wash. You can get it washed, get the spray on protection. Oh, at the end, the little things that come yeah, down. Yeah, the it. spray okay. on protection that we all think is not very good made this professional 20 year plus uh, veteran of, of, of polishing and body shop work and all that think he was working on the most the hardest paint he's ever worked on. When in reality, he just wasn't even touching the surface of the paint. And he Learned used much all of the mist and wipes and he used wax and grease removers, you know, uh, petroleum based products, water based products, detergents, alcohol. So he was hitting that. it with everything. He's hitting to wipe it with it everything, out. but there's no dwell time. It's not as if you can just spray that on there and it magically disconnects it. Right, because a lot of the questions I get is, hey, if I hit it with isopropyl alcohol or I put it with wax and grease remover, is it going to remove it? And I was like, you know, each one varies. I, I, well, I can't sure. give Sure, and in, in the case of isopropyl alcohol IPAs yeah. or, or uh, cleaning solutions that are designed to do that, they're mostly water. Right. And we're using, we're trying to remove hydrophobic uh, layer of, of protection. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it just beads right off. You, obviously you spray it and it's beading up and you're wiping it like that's good. No, it just sat there for moments and it didn't have any dwell time whatsoever. Mm. It well, didn't eat up, it didn't chew anything. It, that didn't, was it yeah. didn't disconnect, it didn't there you go. integrate, it didn't, it didn't instill into that protective layer. Or remove it. So right. here's our example, we have number three. What have, we, what have you done over here? What we've done is we're gonna do a similar type of a test, but in this case, this is raw or naked paint here. So we're gonna go ahead and- So we're 100% sure that when you put the polisher on here, you're actually touching paint. Right, but in this case, we're gonna use a sanding disc. Okay. Okay, we're gonna sand this to show you that how quickly this will sand when the paint is naked. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna replicate what we did here down there. Down here we've actually has, put something. I've applied a polymer sealant and a mist and wipe detailing spray. Okay, and we're gonna sand that again and see the difference between this one, see the difference naked in, paint versus unnaked yeah, paint. Yeah, if it's consistently cut, if it's deep, if it looks the same or it's just skimming, we're gonna be able to tell just by looking at that. All right, let's do it. already see it. Look at that. It's immediately cutting. And consistent. See a little dust, Larry? Yeah. That's normal. And that's where you start getting that pigtailing or pilling if you don't clean that. Yeah, right there. But mainly want to show that rate of cut. Okay, one last clean up. Okay. Okay. Now we have a brand new pad or disc oh, rather. Sorry. Yep. New disc. Like a snowing. Yeah, this okay. is fairly consistent there. And now uh, same thing, just gonna work the area. Wow, look at that. Yeah, you see it jumping? It's just skimming. And now we've, we've probably got some of that in our disc. Look at this. Yeah, inconsistent. See how quickly this one turned white because it's touching the clear coat and grinding away the clear coat. This one's having trouble getting through. And look at the pigtail. Look at that. Wow. You see how it's, it's peeling up? Now pigtails. it's starting to cut. Look at that. It's starting finally to go. So now what's happening is we just cut through that top layer and we started to get naked paint. And clean up. Look at all that pigtail. Wow. All right, so this one went through like immediately, as soon as, as, soon as you did it. So what is this? So this is that's the, paint. That's, that's the paint, paint that we coming off. Yep. And we have less, even though you did basically the same amount, mm -hmm. because you were fighting uh, the polymer. The polymer on top mm -hmm. of it. All right. So describe what's actually now that you wiped it away. What's really going on here? You can see that uh, I it was a little light in the middle, but I tend to tilt a little bit towards the edges to get a good cut. 
but look at the difference here. It's a lot more prominent where the shiny areas didn't sand to the same degree. And, and look how consistently flat that is. But look at here, it's just, it's bouncing and skipping and hopping and riding on the polymers and riding on the accumulated uh, paint residue. So it's about as easy as we can show you uh, on film that um, what the effects are. Okay, so the number two mistake that a lot of people are making when polishing their paint, as we have here, is unreasonable expectations. Give me a little example here. Well, one of the most common ones I get calls about is someone says, hey, Kevin, I got a new car and my buddy says it's got way too much orange pill texture, so I need to sand that down. So what do I need so I can sand my paint smooth? And while we're at it, uh, he also said that I can't get the same results with a random orbital. I need to have a rotary. What do you think about that? Yeah. And I was like, whoa, there's a lot going the on there. Here. Yeah, yeah. Those are two things that you should not be delving into right away. As a beginner, as your only car, you don't need to do that. Slow down. Don't let someone convince you that what you have is not good enough. Right. Don't let them tell you that it's subpar. There's, there's actually some benefits to having some texture. We talked about that earlier. Right. A lot of the UV protections in that area, you put a box down and slide it across the car, it scratches the top. It's easier right. to get that out, right. right? So shift your mindset, slow it down. Don't let someone convince you that you need to do something to your car that you don't necessarily have to do. Let's talk to guys that have been devastated because they cut through. Why? Well, they don't know what they're doing exactly. They don't understand how much paint they're removing. So they're buffing with the rotary and they're sanding and they're using IPA and they're using wax and grease mirrors to check it out. And, and they're doing all these things, but every time they're doing multiple passes and changing pads and liquids and cutting away. The paint more is paint getting thinner and thinner. thinner and thinner. Thinner and thinner and thinner and more sensitive and spongy feeling. And, and it's just frustrating. And eventually an accident occurs and they've cut through on their fender, on their hood, on their door. And now we're talking about a lot of money. So the number one thing to avoid when you're polishing your paint that we've heard a gazillion times and it flows into all the other ones, five, four, three, two, and now this one, of course, mm -hmm. is residue control. So before you answer that, just define what is residue. Well, it's easier to show you. And to do that, we're gonna use wood and sanding. So I'm gonna turn on this machine, sand this wood. And as the, as, as the wood gets removed, you can see that dust. So here we go. That's wood residue. Right? Can you see that? Yep. All right, so that's basically what's happening on the paint. Right, except for in the woodworking industry to control the residue, we vacuum it away. It keeps the sanding disc clean. See how, look at how dirty that uh, disc is. So basically this is mimicking, let's say this pad here. There's a dirty exactly. pad, right. dirty, uh, you know, sanding okay. disc. So now we're gonna turn on the vacuum, do the same thing. And I'll take my hand, and I wipe at, it. And look at the disc. Nothing on my fingers and nothing on the disc. So the dream come true is basically what you're saying. Hey, if we could create a paint polisher <laughs> Polishing. that had a vacuum or something in it. It'd be great. That'd be great. But unfortunately, We don't have that technology Got right it. now. So our residue installs into the buffing liquid and onto the pads. So when we first start polishing, everything's as good as it's going to get. The compound is refined, perfectly sized and shaped. The pads are soft and contourable and fluffy and, and they don't mar the surface. Right. But as you start to polish or you know, compound or polish, you're getting paint, you're grinding paint away, paint residue, and it's installing into the liquids and onto the pads. And this is actually a pad that I confiscated from somebody that was polishing with us, not sure why we're getting scouring yeah, I can or, imagine. or buffer hopping, or my, my rate of cut was greatly diminished. You can imagine by seeing that sanding disc, how all of that wood is covering the abrasive grains and stalling the ability to cut. Right, so I, maybe said another way, focus on working clean. Yes. We don't have the vacuums. Okay, we're living with that right now. Working clean is using a microfiber towel to clean the pad up, using compressed air to use the, you know, the pad up, your environment, every, everything. We talked about that earlier. It, right. it, don't work such big areas right. or use more liquid if you're going to do a big area. So you're controlling the residue as best you can by keeping the percentage of residue versus your buffing liquid right. low. Right. right. So I would say the most uh, single impactful elements uh, of something to avoid going forward when you see something's not, you know, not quite right yes. would be residue control. I think after all this entire episode, if, you, if you're you know, If you take one it, thing away, one thing this away. is the number one thing that you should consider always. Absolutely. On the next episode, we're going to be talking about paint polishing machines and everything you need to know. That's Kevin. I'm Larry. As always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.